Mr. Henry Green. Philip Staff, Carpenter. Yes, Mr. Staff. Why do you rail against Captain Munson so, Mr. Dewitt? I've sailed with him before. Wait till he smells the spices of the Indies. He'll have our eyes for sails to speed his ambition. Seems a just man. You see, Mr. Bilot. You see. <laughs> well, Johnny, my boy, you believe we'll raise the Indies this voyage? Why, Father, you have said we will. Aye, there's a good lad. Do you believe it as I believe it? How, Father? With each breath of life that ebbs and flows in my body. You see the ships, Johnny. The fleet that sails unchecked from London port to Cathay. The endless line of English merchantmen. Their bows deep in the water from weight of spices and silk. Their sails swelling with English pride as they ply back and forth along the great waterway that will send our name into history. We sail with the tide, make ready! <laughs> That summer, the merchant ship Discovery probed the unyielding ice pack of Angava Bay in search of the Northwest Passage. Henry Hudson's resolve to discover the fabled northern route to the Orient would not be shaken by inhospitable seas, nor by men of smaller vision. Maintain this course, Mr. Dewitt. Aye, aye, Master. Out of steady, Mr. Barlett. Hi, Mr. Joyd. Thank God I find you safe, Master. I have been in my prayers all morning, and only now did I learn of your peril. Take hold of yourself, Mr. Brickett. What are you talking about? Oh, the Lord be thanked. I had feared... I feared what, man? There have been rumors. Their tongues always wagging a ship at sea. Threats have been whispered. Threats, you say? Why have I not heard of this? Well, I would not add to your great burden with... Idle sailors gossip. You have been thoughtful to an excess, Mr. Briggs. Besides, the crew already counts it against me that I am the company's representative, and it profits no one to earn the name of spy and informer. Yes, I can see you have been careful, Mr. Prickett. Oh, doubt me not, Master Hudson. Rest assured that if danger threatens, Abercock Prickett is your man as God is my witness. God preserve us, the ship founders. We're doomed. Peace, Mr. Prickett. We are but making way. Oh, God preserve us. Oh. Well, young Henry, make headway. Aye, what ails friend Prickett? He is afflicted with rumours. Rumours? Mr Prickett would have it that trouble is imminent. You take the matter lightly. Uh, so would you if you had listened to as much lower deck prattle as I have in my lifetime at sea. Perhaps, but for I master a knave or two would be dangling now high above mischief. That would still a tongue or two. You bloodthirsty young rogue. Were you, Master, there would be no one left alive to man the discovery. Gentle words and sweet reason will not put an end to unrest. You are too soft, Captain Hell. Come, my young friend, don't be angry with me. More than that of any man aboard, I value your high regard. And have it, sir. I shall not soon forget your kindness in taking me aboard when my fortunes were at a low ebb in England. <laughs> kindness. If kindness is to myself, 
that I shall have one among this rough crew of my own condition and quality. The path ahead is hard and slippery, young Henry. I have need of a friend, a constant friend. Sir, you shall find me as rich in loyalty as I am poor in purse. <laughs> Starboard! Starboard, Mr. Violet! Oh, yeah! Mr. Jewett! Patience, Mr. Jewett, don't be rash. I'm out of patience. This ship won't turn about unless another hand directs the helm. You mistake the temper of this crew if you think they will rise to mutiny. You mistake my temper if you think I'll let this master carry us will and hostages to hell. Peace. He comes now. Well, Mr. Jewett, we make good headway. If we're bound for catastrophe, then we do indeed make good headway. What do you say, Mr. Jewett? By your reckoning, master, we should be in Cathay by now. Yet it's passing cold for the waters of the Indies. Will you mock me, Mr. Jewett? You mock yourself, master, with your lunatic dreams of discovery. Mr. Jewett, you forget yourself. You'll never be satisfied till you've brought us all to a miserable end. He's right, master. Silence! You are a disloyal knave and scoundrel. I speak only what is common gossip on this ship. You have basely toiled against my cause since the day you boarded the Discovery. I will suffer your treachery no longer. You will be put on trial before this day is out. If it be an open trial before the entire ship's company, then I am content. We'll see wherein lies the loyalty of this crew. Mr. Staff. Well, Master, it was whispered in my ear that it might be wise to keep a sword or a musket in our cabins. We said we may find use for them. Many times he swore in my hearing that he would turn the other the ship back from the voyage. He did on this occasion deride the master and put to ridicule his skill in navigation. And Mr. Jewett, he said to me, he thought that before this voyage was out, there would be manslaughter. It would prove bloody for some. You have heard the evidence presented before you this day. It is fit time to punish and cut off further occasions of mutiny. Such base enterprise works against the good of all the ship's company. Mr. Robert Bylet will now be mate. Mr. Jewett loses all wages and privileges attached to his station. Mr. Clemens gives over his office of bosun to William Wilson and also suffers loss of wages. I wish I had not been brought to this necessity. I can only say now that if you bear yourselves well towards me and to this voyage, I will forget injuries and be a means for your good in future. The crew's dissatisfaction with the voyage was temporarily forgotten when the ship reached Didges Island. Here'll be a fine place for our wintering. Well, a game all but flies into our larder. Only give me your permission, and I'll set to and build us a house of dimension and substance. It is early to speak of wintering. Master, take care when you do speak of wintering. It may not be too late. Sir, the remembrance of former service persuades me to overlook your reckless insolence. But don't try me too severely. Aye, Master. We will winter in good time. But while there is open water beneath us, we sail. Sims! 
Aye, aye, sir. Here, young Master Sims, take these to Bennett Matthews for the larder and these. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> oh, the Lord has been bountiful. Oh, with the assistance of able marksmen. You would do well to put your trust in God, John, sir. I trust more in a steady hand than a sure aim. Mark not religion, Mr. Green. Oh, as for religion, old piety, I am clean paper where you may write what you wish. Mr. Green, Mr. Prickett, there'll be no more hunting today. We sail as soon as the last marksman is aboard. Captain Hal, we shall not see the like place again for the coming and going of wild fowl. It's pity, but we've tarried here too long. I beg of you, Master. No one knows better than you how perilous low our larder grows. We sail, we have wasted enough weather. Let's make ready to weigh anchor. Aye, aye, Master. Where will he take us? How many days do we have languish in this bay? Oh, it passes all understanding. Up to the north we sail do we raise land, then down to the south, then up to the north, then down to the south again. It's true, it's true. We seem to be sailing in circles. I begin to doubt whether the master has reason altogether. Ugh, this pork is spoiled. Then kill a pig and get some fresh. We could have good meat in abundance if the master had let us hunt our fill on Digges Island. Now the master does not want for food, he's stuffed with ambition. Ah! John Williams. What brought him to this sorry state? Chilled fingers that could not hold him in the rigging. Where is the surgeon? He has been sent for. Tis God's help Johnny needs now. What has happened here? The sea shall give up her dead and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ who shall change our corruptible body that it may be like his glorious body according to the mighty the words word well. Paul Williams takes not over much notice. All things to himself. May God have mercy on his soul. And all who sail with thee, amen. We have John Williams' chest here, Master. Will you sell his goods before the mast? All save his coat, which shall go to Mr. Green. What's what? Fair, Master. Forgive me, Master, but it is custom to sell his goods. I know the custom, Mr. Bylot. Mr. Green does not have a proper garment for this weather, and he will have the coat. Mr. Bylot, my coat, if you please. I don't know. I don't know. I would yet sail. Mr. Bylot, I would yet sail. But we are frozen fast, Master. We shall not see clear water before spring. Aye, you're right, Mr. Bylot. Send for Philip's staff to build a house on shore. Aye, Master. Uh, Mr. Prickett. Yes, Master. Round up a party of our best marksmen and set them hunting and fishing. We winter here. Here, Master? Tell every man that there will be a prize of money for each beast or fowl he takes. Unless I be mistaken, Master, he will spend but little. We would have been wiser to build our larder at Digges Island. We will do what we can, Mr. Prickett. Yes, Master. Master Hudson? I am. Philip's staff will not build the house. What impertinence is this? He says he will not, Master. What do you mean, sir? Master, 
This past month, I'd have built a house for our wintering, but you answered me nay. Now I'll not go hand in hand with such work. The nails will take the very skin off of my lips. You shall build when I tell you it is your place to do so. I know where my place belongs more than you do, Master. I'm no ass carpenter. You want a house, you build it yourself. Insolent wretch! I'll have you hanged. Maybe, Master. I still won't build you your house. You will change your mind. I think this place is going to be better for wild fowl than the ditches either. Not if you do the hunting, yeah. Mr. Star. Yeah, wait a minute. There we are. Well, I don't have the luck you have, you know. Luck? You call it luck? <laughs> well, look what I got. Well, if you had a good eye, Mr. Staff, you might do as well as this. <laughs> Two brace. You'd have done better if you went hunting with your carpenters all, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Green. Aye, Captain Hal. I would speak to you, sir. Do you know that Philip's staff is out of my favor? I had heard something of it. And you make of this man a dear companion? We did but go hunting together. Do you turn against me, Mr. Green? I do not, sir. I am loyal. You have no reason to doubt me. Loyalty is as loyalty does, Mr. Green. You make sore trial of mine, sir. I'll have your coat, Mr. Green. My coat? I will not shelter him who comforts my enemies. Very well, Master Hudson. If you wish a friend to have it, sir, you will be sore pressed to dispose of it on this ship. Torn by dissension and ill-equipped to meet the severities of the northern climate, the crew of the Discovery settled down to endure the long wintering in James Bay. As winter wore on, food grew scarce, and the hunt yielded only disappointment. Petty jealousies and bitterness were forgotten in the face of the common misery. Of all human desires, only the lust for food remains strong. The starved and sickly men who awaited spring breakup were a vastly different crew from the robust English seamen who had sailed out of London Harbor one year before. Is your portion, Mr. Matthews? I wish it were more. But, Master, this cheese is bad. It will stop a gap, Mr. Matthews. The cheeses are not of equal goodness. That is why I share out the remaining store, so that each may have some good, some bad, that no man may have the advantage over another. Aye, aye, Master. You think the master makes just division of the food? I wouldn't say. But gladly would I trade my share for his own. Would you, Mr. Green? Aye. I would. Then you and I must talk without delay. Aye. The master can suffer hunger lightly enough. He has his private entrance to the Ald, to which he serves his own turn and that of his favourites. Look well upon Philip's staff and the surgeon and the master's own son. The fat drips off him. Oh, that's right, right. Right. Tell me they starve as we do. Aye. Yes. Staff himself has said he had meat from the master. Meat? So that some may be kept up. These are Master Hudson's own words. What do you want here, Mr. Green? This is no place for those who follow Master Hudson. Peace. 
Mr. Green's with us. He's pledged himself to our cause. Well, there's turnabout for you. I have long been out of Master Hudson's favor. Now I wish him only harm. Well, if it's harm you wish him, you've come to the right place after all. We may blow up with hunger. Now gums may rot with a scurvy. But this mad master thinks only of his passage to the Indies. What do you say, Mr. Green? I say that unless we put an end to it now, he will put an end to us. Mutiny. As for me, if I am to starve now or hang later, I'll take my chance with the gallows. Enter. Well, sir. Mr. Prickett, we are desperate men. We are calling a halt to this lunacy. I'll see you. Not a fortnight's victuals remain for the entire company, and still the master babbles of finding the passage. At an appointed hour, he and certain of his followers will be seized and put into the small boat, there to shift for themselves. Nay, nay, you're jesting. We will go through with it or die, Mr. Prickett. How stand you, sir? Why? With God, as ever. It is time to make a more temporal alliance. For the sake of your wives and children, do not commit so foul a deed in the eyes of God and man. Sir, your plea would move me were I not a bachelor. However, fear not. Your place is safe on this ship. I did not come into this ship for the purpose of mutiny. Perhaps it would be best for him to try his luck in the small boat after all. God save me. God save me. Hold your peace, sir. Are you with us or no? Gentlemen, stay your rash action, and I will endeavor to persuade the master to a more just distribution of the food and to turn the head of the ship back to England. Nay, we intend to go on while the action is hot, and I will cut the throat of any man who crosses us. May God forgive you. Sir, I weary of your piety. Wait. You said yourself he's needed to plead our cause with Sir Dante Digis. Why? Look you, friend Evercook, why should we quarrel? We both of us have the good of the ship's company at heart. I fear it is some worse matter you have in mind. I swear by this holy book, it is not blood and revenge I seek. I will do no man unnecessary harm, and what I do is for the good of this voyage and nothing else, so help me God. Will the others swear the same? Aye, we will. Then the will of God be done. What is it? Ali Master, the ship's afire! <laughs> what do you intend? You shall know, Master, when you get in the boat. The oh. boat? Ah. I'll have you hang for this, you rats. What Who's happens? Help you unhand this stump. Uh, Mr. Right. King, oh, come on. Oh. Mr. King. Water, oh. water, oh. help us. Hold your temper, Jake! Come on, Mr. Mahang! Get out of my way! 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 Get out of my I'll go on the boat. You choose death, Carpenter. Just give me my chest of tools and be damned to you. I'd sooner commit myself to God's mercy. And for the love of the master, go down into the boat than stay aboard here with the likes of you. So be it. Give him his chest and meal for two days. Ah, stop. 
Well, Captain Hal, now you have a ship suitable to your qualities as a seaman. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Green, it is not too late. Reconsider. We stand now on the edge of discovery. This great bay must open somewhere and yield the passage. Let us thrust westward and resolve our difficulties in the common triumph of raising the Indies. Ah! Now that you are free of us, Master Hudson, you may sail westward for all you are worth. <laughs> and hear me all. This voyage has been conducted according to my commission and to my conscience. I have no cause to repent of my action, nor desire to beg now for release. History will judge my deeds, as it will judge yours. Sir, you are quite mad. None who sailed in the small boat were ever seen or heard from again. The discovery of Hudson's Bay gave England access to a rich fur trade and established an English claim to the vast western interior of Canada at a time when the French were founding Quebec. Why do you stand about? Man the ship! We sail for England! Aye, Mr. Green! After a hazardous voyage, during which many more lives were lost, including that of Henry Green, the mutineers returned to England and eventual trial. None were convicted of mutiny. The last voyage of Henry Hudson, despite failure and tragedy, laid the foundation for all English settlement in Western Canada. <laughs>